Okay. After numerous takes, we finally managed to fucking finish Novaria. Yeah. So let's spend 20 minutes talking to everybody now. 20 minutes? You give us so much credit. I know, right? It's gonna take a whole fucking session at this rate. Probably. Considering the size of the, uh, and layout of the Normandy. Hey, at least the elevator takes less than five minutes. God, I'm yeah. glad I got that mod. Dude, it's like... Lurch and Otto have a test again, would need fast travel. <laughs> You've been with CSEC a while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but... Yeah, I've seen some interesting things. I'll bet you have. Anything in particular that stands out? I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. That case was a bit... disturbing. Oh my. What happened? Why were you investigating? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. Most of it harmless, nothing I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts, or organs, mostly. We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. We weren't sure if there was a new black market lab, or if some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. You've seen this before on the Citadel? Every so often, some lab sells unwanted parts through the black market. But they're not as bad as the sun goes. I remember this one Elcor diplomat we caught in my first year on the job. He was hacking people up and selling their organs. Had a station in a bit of a panic. But this case wasn't that clear cut. Turns out there was more going on than we first realized. Get, get that image in your head for a second. The big, ponderous Elcor. Scary thought. Yeah, that's, uh... He wouldn't have any trouble holding you down, that's for sure. Yeah. So how did you figure out what you was You know, if he was fast so enough we got a hold of to be able to pin you down. <laughs> the weird thing was, the match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian worked briefly for Dr. Salion, the geneticist. So I went to his lab, hoping to find evidence of cloned organ but there was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. <coughs> You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their virility, counteract the effects of the genophage. If it doesn't work, uh -huh. that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. But then what they have for? Killing them. Yep. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually in their... Um, it's actually a figure of speech for them. Instead of saying you got a pair, they say you got a quad. Huh. The more you know. Yeah. What did you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees for interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. You mean threat? Was that really necessary? Maybe, maybe not. Either way, it paid off. One of my detainees started bleeding. We offered to patch him up, and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. Our medics found incisions all over his body, some of them fresh. That was a big break. These people weren't just Dr. Salion's employees. They were test tubes, walking, living test tubes. He was growing parts inside these people? Exactly. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. Most of the victims were poor. He paid them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes more people were broken on these who could just leave the in. Most of them were a mess. But only on the inside and hidden so that no one could see him. Yeah. I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. We never caught him. Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, the ship was already leaving. He threatened to kill his hostages and tried to stop them. But you went after him anyway, right? I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down, but CSEC headquarters countermanded my order. They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties, and the ship was destroyed so close to the Citadel. I told them those hostages were dead anyway. We just used them to make more organs. They wouldn't listen. 
Do you have a particular opinion on that? Uh, neither one. That's a difficult one. Yeah. Well, you can't get them all. No, but letting him get away like that. All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't. But at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. Yeah, it's a tough choice. I suppose I can see both sides. But what's done is done. I suppose. Can't waste too much time worrying about it now. Just wish I could have stopped him. That's all. Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salion? I sent out feelers from time to time. to find something. I thought I'd found him a while back. He changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Hart. His idea of a joke, I guess. I told the military, but they weren't convinced. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. I'll check out what? the coordinates when I get a chance. I was hoping you'd say that. But Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Alien, I want to be there when you find him. Well, he wants to make sure it is Alien, man, since, you know, you're kind of the only one who knows what he looks like. <laughs> Commander? What's your opinion on the last mission? You mean the Rachni, right? They were dangerous, Commander. They proved that 2,000 years ago. I think it was a mistake to let them go. But that wasn't my call to make. It, it was yours. If you haven't talked to Dr. Tassoni, you probably should. She just lost her mom. That has to hurt. Just saying, Commander. Do you have a few minutes to talk yeah. one on one? Sure. I was just watching some mail from home. Oh, before I go, we saw Caden in a news vid about the Normandy. He's cute. Later, sis. <laughs> Let's pretend this never happened. <laughs> I don't know, both of these both of these seem pretty good. Which one was Kaiden? Kaiden is the biotic one floor up. Oh, right. The only the, the other guy we got from the starting mission. Kaiden, huh? Are you interested in the lieutenant chief? Of course not, sir. Fraternization is against regulations. What's up? You sure. need to light eavesdrop on family mail. Your family seems to be important. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With Dad on duty so much, I had to help Mom raise them. Did your father serve with the fleet? Yeah, took any crap posting he could get that offered space time. You know what? He worked his ass off trying to get recognized. He never made it above servicemen third class. He was real proud when I made chief. First thing he did was salute. <coughs> What about your mother? You haven't mentioned her. You must know what military wives are like. Strong because they have to be. Able to raise kids while dad's away on a six month cruise. She has a degree in planetary yeah. biology. She and dad both wanted to see new worlds. She gave up her career to raise us though. You have more than Ooh, one sister? That's good, that hurts. Sounds like yeah. a big family. Yeah, I'm the oldest, then Abby, then Lynn. Sarah's the youngest, she's still in high school. With four girls, Dad used to say he felt more outnumbered at home than on maneuvers. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you grow up? All over. Same as you expect. We transferred a half a dozen times before I finished grade school. You go where personnel command sends you, right? I guess that's why I'm so tired of my sisters. We'd have to leave all our friends every two or three years. I was an only child, but I get the idea. At least one of my parents was always on duty. Yeah. Military families, eh? With schedules like that, it's a wonder we ever have kids anymore. Things <laughs> were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. That sounds like a story. Feel like sharing? With the kind of people those families make, it's kind of surprising that what organization is for the on ships. Yeah. I didn't think he was a bad kid, just like, pushy. You think they then encourage me more military families? <laughs> I was on active duty. Sarah's graduating high school this year. This was only a couple years back. They were on Amaterasu. At the time, I was assigned to Chernobyl. The same cluster, but a dozen hell wide away. Close enough to talk regularly, too far to make it back in an emergency. I couldn't afford a fast packet flight. If he really liked her, he wouldn't be pushy. Yeah, of course. If he didn't ask at all, I'd wonder if he thought Sarah was ugly. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Mike thought they'd go for a romantic walk in the woods, because he figured it was past time they did the deed. 
She levered Mike face first into a tree and left. Didn't have a scratch on her. Good thing <laughs> mom and dad had us all learn some kind of self-defense. I took emergency leave and walked Sarah's school for a few days. Why didn't you tell the police? She said it wouldn't solve the real problem, and she and Mike would both become household names. It was a small colony. I said it was her call to make, that we should let her do it her way. Mom was pretty pissed about that. You said all of your sisters learned self-defense? Lynn did pistol sense. practice, but didn't like it. She's kind of nervous. Sarah took Aikido. Abby decided to learn the sword. She always was a little weird. Likes big skirts <coughs> and tops you have to tie her into. They do great things to your figure, though. <laughs> so, what did you learn? One of Dad's friends God. taught me Marine hand to hand. <laughs> she learned fist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were still. way home to walk your sister to school. It was only a dozen light years, like a day's cruise. It's not like it was going to Earth or something. My last day out, Mike was waiting for us. Sarah had told her friends, so everyone at school knew what he did. He wasn't happy. I wanted to snap him in half, but Sarah gave me this look, this let me handle it, I need to do this alone look. She kept her uh, yes. her as he screamed in her face. She just let him vent. Then he tried to punch her. I swear, she just flowed around him. Next thing I knew, he's face down on the sidewalk and there's blood everywhere. Welcome to Aikido. <laughs> Sarah must be as good as you. Better. I'm more or less a straight up puncher. When he swung, she just... She wasn't there anymore, and he fell. She helped him stop the bleeding and had me call an ambulance. She told the paramedics he fell. Before they took him to the hospital, Mike touched Sarah's arm. I thought he was going to end up on the ground again. But he hung his head, whispered, I'm sorry, and started crying. She hugged him. The Williams women are a decisive bunch, Commander. We do things when we're ready. Not before, not after. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. Your sister's something else. But you didn't mention your father at all. Was he on deployment? My dad always wanted to serve in space. But he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. I cannot rest yeah. and travel. I will drink life to the leaves. All times I've enjoyed greatly, have suffered greatly, both with those that love me and alone. Interesting thing. Always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. Hmm. Your choice? I didn't know you liked classical literature. Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. <laughs> okay then. Does he still like it? I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Oh. Dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching them. You mean from wherever we go after death? Dead on, Skipper. He's with God now. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? Everyone has the right to believe what they want. It says so on the Alliance chart. Only with fancier words. I'm glad you're reminded of that. <laughs> I've met a few people who were really weirded out by my faith. Because I work in space, I can't believe in a higher power. Jeez. Right. Hello, have you people looked out the window? How can you look at this galaxy and not believe in something? I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. Dismissed, Chief. Sir. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's... There's a really no point in discriminating anyway. Yeah, seriously. <coughs> I mean, she's... Remember, she's supposed to be the Xenof one of the xenophobes on the crew. The only, the only other human on this deck is, is the engineer and the wreck officer. Mm-hmm. She's the quote-unquote sinner for. Yeah. I mean, she did also seem genuinely worried for the other. Yeah. Such as? Such as, I needed to get out of our system. I needed to eat. I needed to survive. Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help, 
That's why I had to leave. What happened? I was betrayed. Uh -oh. I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war, but the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared, one of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. But he was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Salarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. You wanted to be yours. <laughs> I just wanted Jared to shut up, to stop his ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go to war. Even if we did, the Genophage made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. We told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding, at least for one generation. And for a while, we were getting through. Some of the tribes started coming around. I take it the Warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes. A meeting on neutral ground. He wanted to talk. Sure. Close, in the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead laid bare to remind us where we come from. Where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. It sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. But when your father invites you to a crush, well, there are some laws that even we hold sacred. Jared oh. was your father? Yep. He was. Until that day. We talked. But we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him, he gave the signal. His men leapt from the graves of our ancestors like Krogan undead. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. I escaped with my life, but not before I sank my dagger deep into my father's chest. That is why I left, and that's why I'll never go back. You must have family There's other than your father. Don't you miss them? You're trying to make me cry, Shepard. <laughs> I've got some unfinished business with my family. But that's all. What kind of business? Before I left, I made an oath to my father's father. I swore to recover my family's battle armor. It was taken from him after the uprising. Who has it? Originally, it was taken by the Turian military. We weren't allowed armor or weapons after the war. Now, it's in the hands of Ton Actus, a Turian scum who collects relics from the war. He's made millions selling Krogan artifacts that were stolen from my people. He's got several bases where he stores his goods. All fortified and guarded. I just don't know which base has my family's armor. Just tell me where to start looking. I'll upload the data to your nav system. But Commander, I want to be there when you find him. That side quest number? The second. Sure. Yep. Action number three, because remember Tally mentioned uh, pilgrimage. Naturally, we can do something about that. Yeah, I was just referring after this, after the main quest we just did. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Shepard, I'm glad you're here. Good to see you smiling again, <coughs> so to speak. <laughs> yeah. I'm sleeping much better now. I guess I'm getting used to how quiet your ship is. I still need to learn of my pilgrimage, though. I know Sterans are top priority, but with all the worlds we go to, I was hoping to find something to bring back to the flotilla. What are you hoping to find? Usually, people bring back something like a derelict ship that we can use for salvage. But I need something bigger. 
There's a lot expected of me. What's so special about you? It's my father. He's the senior member of the Admiralty Board. He's one of only five people who can overrule the decisions of the Conclave for the good of the migrant fleet. My father is responsible for the lives of 17 million people. Our entire race is in his hands, and I'm his only child. Well, yeah, that's uh, a bit of pressure. Yeah. It must be tough on you. My people place a high value on family and ancestry. There's an unspoken expectation that I'll live up to my father's example. Everyone's waiting for me to do something great on my pilgrimage. Something that will forever change our lives for the better. Like say if for I don't, first. it's like I failed. <laughs> and that reflects badly on both me and my father. What would you need to bring back to make everyone happy? Something that would help us better understand the Geth. They've changed significantly since the exile. They've continued to evolve. We've done our best to study them, but it's not easy. They're very reclusive. Until recently, they never went beyond the borders of the veil. And all the Geth we run into now are under Saren's control. We'd need to find Geth operating on their own, independently. But I don't want to stand in the way of our mission, Shepard. First, we stop Saren. Then I'll worry about my own problems. I should go. See you hmm. later. Turns my head to the right. UNC, Geth Incursion. UNC, Dr. Salem. Rex, Family Armor. <coughs> knowing, knowing where to look say, does save a good bit of time. Mm -hmm. But knowing to getting to know the crew is also equally important. Anything you looks like me. That's just, just his, that's just his resting face. What's your yeah, it's also that? the light. Yeah. Because he yeah, looks a lot of red. Second in command, advisor. Anyway, they should set him back a bit. I'm sure Dr. Vasoni's heard of him. Poor kid. How did they kill her own mom? Any opinion on the Rachnite? Off the record? If we had the option, I'd as soon have left it to the council. We weren't out here doing the Rachnite war. I'm not sure we have any business getting involved. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Well, they know about the stone wall that we've had from the council. They deserve to know what we're up against. They're on your side. They're pissed about the resistance we're getting, especially from our side. I'll have a better handle on the woman when my head stops hurting. Or else you'll flare up. Anything I can do? No, Commander, it'll settle down. It's rough sometimes, but they spike higher than a lot of L3s. Except for you, of course. Besides, I fared a lot better than some after Canadians was through. What do you mean about me? I'm not a biotic. <laughs> I haven't heard anything about Canadians in a while. I wonder if the yeah, tech abilities are also... No. No, that's not that one. Not a biotic implant. Yeah, well, do they have their own kind of weird implants? Yeah. Once we had an embassy, okay. we said this one then. Canadians could bring in experts instead of taking it slow. Get your knuckles wrapped <clears throat> a few times, Lieutenant. Now you could say that. Our instructor was a Turian by the name of Commander Vernus. A real hard ass. He basically had a free pass to break us if it would turn out a decent biotic. We got inspired from there, Commander. Did he ever face charges for that? He got hit. Like everything else in Jump Zero was under the table. The less said, the better. Anyway, this is ancient stuff. I walked it off a long time ago. I should get back to my duties, Commander. We're here to make history, not rehash it. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Mm. Commander? Mm. Yeah. I guess not everyone gives you a quest after this one. Huh? I guess not everyone gives you a quest after no. this one. No. <laughs> yeah. Ash and Caden are. Ash, Caden, and Liara are just dialogue. Hmm. Speaking of which... Hello, Leona. If you are here to talk about Benezia's death, you need not bother. She brought it upon herself. Don't pretend it doesn't bother you. She was your mother. She was. But she was not. 
I prefer to remember Benezia as she used to be, before she was corrupted by Sovereign's power. The best of your mother lives on in you. Her determination, her intelligence, her strength. That is kind of you to say. I appreciate your concern, but I am fine. Benezia chose her path, just as I have chosen mine. I am with you until the end, Shepard. Tell me about yourself, Leo. Me? I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. I spend most of my time on remote digs, unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. Sounds dangerous. And lonely. Sometimes, I would run afoul of indigenous life forms or stumble across a small band of mercenaries or privateers. But I was always careful. Until the Geth followed me to Artemis Tau. I never found myself in any situation my biotics could not handle. As for the solitude, well, that is one aspect that most appealed to me. Sometimes, I just need to get away from other people. You don't like other people? I suppose it comes from being a matriarch's daughter. People expected me to follow in Benezia's footsteps. They wanted me to become a leader of our people. Matriarchs guide their followers into the future. They seek the truth of what is yet to come. Maybe that's why I became so interested in the secrets of the past. It sounds so foolish when I say it out loud. It sounds like I became an archaeologist simply to spite Benezia. You must enjoy <coughs> something about it. I love my work. Seeking out history's lost secrets has a special appeal for me. You were actually touched by working Prothean technology. That is why I find you so fascinating, Commander. <coughs> I'm trying to study me. I'm not some artifact you can take back to your lab, Doctor. I... I am sorry, Commander. I did not mean it like that. I... I just... I am used to dealing with computers and data disks. I am not very good with people. I let my professional curiosity get the better of me. Please forgive me. Let us talk about something else. Nah, nothing else. I should That's go. basically the line to just reject that. I actually don't know. I was more concerned about Ashley. Hmm. Also, it didn't occur to me until right then. But, uh, the way she phrased that being a matriarch's daughter kind of implies that considering her young for an Asari age, that Menezia probably had her in her matriarch stage. Yeah, that certainly seems like it. Yeah. Leave this frozen rock. I suppose we could take care of this while we're here. I don't even remember what this is. Uh, I mean, it says missing person. It's a side quest. It's XP and loot. Yep. Probably when I need it. You don't say. I mean, as much as we've grinded and cheesed, Commander, we're still urgent getting out of the command 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 command. command. I'll patch it through. Shepard, this is Admiral Hackett from Alliance Command. We've got a situation here, and you're the only one that can handle it. What do you need, Admiral? There's an Alliance training ground where we test weapons and technology and live oh, fire simulations. One of the VIs we use to simulate enemy tactics in the drills is no longer responding to our override commands. It's going oh, wrong. Are you telling me this computer is thinking on its own? We're not stupid, Shepard. This is a virtual intelligence, not a true AI. It's not self-aware, and it can't access any external systems. We didn't do anything illegal here. Virtual intelligence support is critical to our military success. VIs process thousands of status reports and react in nanoseconds. No human can do that. We need you to fight your way through the training ground of the VI core and manually disable it. Don't worry, Admiral. I'll take that thing out. I know Spectre's answered the Council, but you're still human. You're still part of the Alliance military, and right now we need you. The VI controls all the facilities, weapons, drones, and automated defenses. You're the only one that can pull this off, Shepard. Good luck. Of course, I have nothing being that popular, huh? Yep. Meanwhile. Oh, yeah, this is that one we picked up way back on the Citadel. 
way back. Colon class. All compartments exposed to space and the fusion plant is leaking. Well. Dude. Trail of radioactive particles, exhaust towards Zaiwan. Level one cold hazard. God damn it! Left one ice ball for another. Yup. This one, at least this one should be pretty short, right? Yep. Speaking of which, that's a next time problem. Yeah, I think so.